I am certainly so nervous. What, what if they are very scared of me? It's okay. We'll just warn them beforehand. Just go say hello. Okay. Uh, hello? I am al -Hisan, but you can just call me Ali. They can learn to say your whole name. Oh, uh, okay. Then al al I am certainly al -Hisan. I will probably study humans when I am uh, adult woven, but I know by hearsay that many humans are scared of the Shahirsa. Today I will teach you about Shahirsa need culture and then you will certainly be less afraid. Look! I'm looking. Oh, uh, let's start with questions humans have about Shahirsa biology. Well, firstly, uh, you are spiders? Yes, but Unlike other spiders, we are certainly woven from the threads of time by our god. We weave webs and have eight limbs and eight eyes like spiders. Mm. Do you have different sizes based on your sexes like spiders? Sorry, this might be a bit personal, but how can you tell male Shahirza from female Shahirza? Uh, mostly by smell. Though you humans probably cannot smell it. Adult Shahirza have different parts for weaving children. Uh, adult Shahirza also have gone through adult weaving. When one gets big enough, one weaves a cocoon where one turns back into water for a month to weave one's adult form. I have not done it yet, though I know by hearsay, one's body will know what it wants to be. Uh, children, Shahirsa, do not have the parts to weave children. What if you don't want children? Oh, one can certainly skip it, uh, get both or neither parts, but you will weave into stronger exoskeleton. It is a little like human puberty, but one chooses when to do it. That's really cool. I wish I could have done that. I believe it, but I know by hearsay, if you turned to water, you would not become human again. <laughs> Probably not. All right, what about... Okay, this is super personal. Ask anything. So, lady spiders are known for eating their husbands. Oh, we do not do that. That is zivu shock. It is forbidden and very, very bad. It leads us from our one fate. Fate is Izu Sak. Izu Sak. Izu Sak. Izu Sak. It means uh, very, very good. So, uh, to cover one's head when one prays, that is Izu Sak. Oh, okay. Izu Sak. Yes, good. I will probably take you to my house and show you more. Look, look. I will look. This is my home. We sleep in hanging bed and we travel at night. Yes, you're nomads, right? Are all Shahirza nomads? No. We follow the water, but some Shahirza always have water. They stay where water and best rocks. See, in the desert, the salt, uh, salt plains, there is certainly not a lot of water. We cultivate... Mm. These cacti? Yes, this is a special cacti that become adult fast and we drink for water. This is a net. It is also certainly for water. In human culture, they think water is for death and abyss. Ooh. Mm. In the north, water is associated with Asarali and Danvir. It's like the cycle between life and death. Uh, sani water is for power and strength because it rocks and sand become not rocks because of water and and 
a fighter at water source has more power and strength. Oh, so whoever controls the water controls the desert because it's scarce. Yes. That makes sense. And to share water fairly is issue sock, but to keep only for oneself is zivu shock. Is zivu shock like a taboo? It probably is. Are there any things that are zivu shock that humans might think are weird? Uh, zivu shock. Uh, okay, I know probably. There are zvish foods and shish foods. Is zvish like zivushak? Zvish, uh, like wind and windy, zivushak and zvish. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yes, zvish foods like predator birds and water creatures that do not have scales and. Land creatures with, with uh, like one foot, one toe, uh, not toe. Like a paw, like a cat's yes. paw. A horse we cannot eat. That is zivu shock. Oh, okay. All animals must be killed fast with a knife too. Fast is issue suck because it is unkind to kill slow. That makes sense. And then no blood. Lots of salt, so no blood. Why? Uh, demons eat blood, so we do not. Ah, uh, are demons even shock? Uh, uh, yes and no. I will show you. We are near Vukha, and you will see inside Pavav. Look, look. I will look. Oh, so it's this whole city down here. Yes, it is. It is much cooler down here too. Yes, yes. The earth is big ending for heat. But also we hide from demons here. I see. Yes. Uh, this is ish light woven from silk by Vigra. This and this is where you tie your little scarf to show you are here. If they make a new tunnel, they will know you are not there. Mm. The glassware is so beautiful. Mm, yes, yes, this is too. But look, look this way. This tells the story Shahir Zani. It is in Shahir Zat language here. Look. Here is that. Oh, human. Uh, yeah, it says in the time before the woven, before our tapestries could be read. The fourteen gods wove the world together. As they wove the world, the shattered god became the demons. The demons inhabited the south and took it over. There was nothing to oppose them. In that time, the god of sapiens blessed a separate race, and those became the humans. These gods became favored, or these humans became favored by the gods. The demons, meanwhile, found our ancestors before we became blessed. We were simply mindless weavers weaving homes. But the demons liked our silk for its incredible smooth texture, strength, and flexibility, and so they took us in. Being in proximity to the demons gave us awareness, and thus we woke up. The moment we awoke, we could only see the suffering of our people. We were livestock, and we could foresee our own demises. Once the demons learned we had been blessed more than the humans had, they gained even more interest, and so our suffering was set. And so we begged the fourteen gods to save us, but they had never chosen our people. They only chose the humans. We had no godlings among us. We were abandoned to our fates. But we are the weavers, and thus we wove our prayers, directing them elsewhere. We could not rely on the fourteen gods. They had turned their backs on us. Instead, we wove our hopes and prayers into ourselves, and thus the most ancient weavers wove into existence the 15th. This shook the world when the 14 learned there was now one more. The 15th god, Shamahim, god of freedom, hope, and clairvoyance, god of our people. Their birth blessed those who wove their existence with their voice, and thus the weavers were the first prophets. When the other gods abandoned us, we took our fates into our own hands and wove a new ending, a new fate. It would take time for our actions to pay off, but our god would never forsake us. 
For we chose our God, we chose our fate. Always remember that our fates are our own. This is true by hearsay, but it is certainly true. That's a beautiful story. Yes, so some people hate all the demons, but a demon just is. A demon is not Zivu Shak. Those demons certainly were Zivu Shak because they were very, very bad. They ate people, but not every demon. A demon could be good with actions and be a sheath demon. Oh, I almost forgot it is prayer time soon. Come, they will read and then they will sing. Come listen. I thank you because I taught you about Sha Hirzani culture today and you looked and listened. Uh, thank you for teaching me. I think you'll certainly make a good ambassador. And I hope you'll get to study all the humans you want soon. <laughs> I want to give a special thanks to Grim Coordinator for writing and sensitivity reading for the Shashir Zani. Grim Coordinator is a queer Jewish writer who's been deeply involved in fandom spaces and creative works for years. She's been invaluable in making the Shashir Zani a more authentic and more heartfelt representation of what it's like to be part of a historically marginalized community. And she will continue to be involved in all aspects of their creation on my end. Uh, you can DM her on Discord at uh, Grim Coordinator. And um, yeah, I'm just really happy I got to work with her. This was such a special experience. It really makes me want to work with more people moving forward. I have had the Shahirzani around for years. I used to have them in a couple worlds back where they were uh, a manifestation of the things I was learning about the Muslims and their rise in Arabia and uh, the empire that they built and how incredible that was in the culture and such that they preserved around it. And, you know, honestly, the history of the rise of the Muslim empire is honestly undertaught um, over out here in the West. So I was uh, using this sort of as a sort of like a mind palace of a place to store this information. But in real life, uh, I don't actually know any Muslims from Arabia. So as I've been moving, you say I'm more into the public eye. I don't want to uh, misrepresent a culture that not only do am I not a member of, uh, but I don't know anyone from, and I'm sure I could pay for uh, beta readers and such, but you know, it's much easier to work with something that's a little bit more close to home. I also want to thank my friend Abigail, who also contributed to this project. She's also been amazing. She was the one who suggested that uh, the Shahirzani only have one god, and that their god doesn't have a godling, and that the Shahirzani also eat kosher. I mean, they're basically kosher rules. While the Swiss foods are a little different from the way kosher is described, uh, they are more or less a one-to-one. -one. They describe functionally the same things. So, yeah. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe because the bathtub stream is at 1,000. Let's go! <laughs>